Welcome along to the show. It is Footy Talks presented by Benjamin Moore. Great to have you with us, Luke, alongside Stephen and KJ. Let's get to the uh, president of Toronto FC, Bill Manning, who joins us on Footy Talks today with TFC getting set to make the move for the next uh, few weeks to uh, Hartford, Connecticut as the home stadium. First stop, of course, is going to be DC. Bill, uh, great to see you. How are you? Good to see you guys. Good to see you. you. First off, uh, congratulations on making the Canadian Championship final. I presume relying on Montreal and Vancouver, though, isn't quite the way you'd drawn it up originally. No, you know, I felt that we were going to need 13 points uh, to guarantee it. And, um, you know, so so getting the 12 points still allowed for Montreal uh, the opportunity to get in. So we're, we're happy how the game went down. Um, we still picked up 12 points in league play, get the Canadian Championship final, and, uh, um, you know, this CONCACAF berth, you know how important it is to our club. So, uh, you know, one step away. Were you, were you watching the game from behind the sofa or peeking through your fingers last night? <laughs> you know, I, I decided I actually didn't watch the game, and I would I would go to my phone every, I don't know, 20 minutes or so, and it was funny at about the – 35 minute mark, Ali texted me and he's like, you know, Montreal's knocking on the door. We need a red card or something crazy. And sure enough. <laughs> yeah, he got it. And the game changes. And, you know, Freddie Montero obviously had a, had a couple. And uh, um, so just just happy with the results. And uh, certainly you don't like you like to control your own destiny, but we'll take it. There's so much for us to get into, Bill, um, with regards to what's happening with the club right now. But now that you're into the final of the Canadian Championship, um, do you know when that will be played or where it will be played or how it will be played? Or could, could it possibly be played in the U.S. or in December or how? How does this happen? Yeah, look, I, I think the CSA and Peter Montopoli have, have been um, very understanding, right, of the situation. And, um, you know, we are now in the midst of our regular season. And so it'll, it'll have to wait. And what we had talked about amongst the teams with, with the CSA was once the, once the, the MLS um, participant, once their season is done, so out of the playoffs, then we can kind of figure out a time frame to play the CPL champion. So, um, you know, I hope that's sometime in December or January because uh, we, we obviously want to be playing long. Um but it's just, you know, it's everything during this whole pandemic. You, you have to be flexible and you have to be nimble and uh, we'll figure out a solution. Um, but, you know, there's an understanding that we're going to be playing pretty much every Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday for, mm. the, for the best part of the next few months. And has there been any discussion, Bill, about location at all? Or is that too far ahead? Did they have to wait and see who was going to be in the final before they determined where that game could be played? Yeah, I think they were going to wait till who the tar two participants are and then, and then figure that out. You know, certainly we uh, we were going to push to host a game at BMO. Right. Maybe well, Bill, you, you've done a lot of work the last couple of weeks to, or more than a couple of weeks, to set up what is coming next for Major League Soccer and for TFC um, in this next phase of the season. So take us through what happened and, and why you ended up with the team uh, go to Hartford, Connecticut as the, the home base coming up. I don't know if you have enough time. This could take a few hours. <laughs> we got nothing else to do. We'll be here for you. Yeah, it, it's it's really been something. Um, you know, we it, when it became apparent that you know when the Blue Jays actually um, you know they weren't going to allow the teams to come in for the Blue Jays, we really started looking at options in the states. And we, we went pretty far down the road with Philadelphia, actually. Um, and, and, and they were having some challenges with their local government. Um, and it's funny, an old friend of mine, Ray Reed, is the head coach at UConn. And I was speaking to him. And he said, you know, have you thought about Rensselaer in, in Hartford? And I had remembered the U.S. national team had played there. I've never been there. And so um, a guy who's working at the league office now, Jay Berhalter, I called him and I said, hey, do you know the folks there from when you were at the national team program? And he made the introduction and they were very welcoming. I mean, the, the governor, um, Lamont, was, was, was so welcoming as well as a guy named David Lehman who heads up their economic development. 
And our hope originally was that we would fly in and out for games and um, that all three teams, we all worked together. We worked with the government, but at the end of the day, um, the government wasn't comfortable with, with that plan. And so the contingency plan was to set up shop um, down in these, these surrogate markets. And so in Hartford, we uh, will be playing our games at Rentsler Field. We'll be practicing there the day before. Um, we're, we're set up in a, in a very nice hotel called the Goodwin Hotel. And we're going to train at Trinity College, um, which is a, a nice Division three school, has a very nice manicured grass field and a training field, about eight minutes from the hotel. And then I get a call from the AD the other day saying that uh, – they have a little bit of a scare, just things run pause right now. And so we have a couple of other options. We've, we've, we've had to have all these contingency plans. And as I say, you just got to be nimble and flexible. And um, there's a, a local soccer club, Farmington Soccer Association. We're going to go visit them on Monday. Evidently, they have uh, a few very, very nice clubs, grass. Uh, that was very important to us was to be on grass. Uh, there was some turf fields that were available to us, but uh, that was important. And then there's another uh, local private school up there as well that we're looking at. So we'll have a good training situation. Um, there's a there's a guy there locally who used to work for U.S. Soccer named Tom Meredith that's helping us out, as is Ray Reed. And so we have some feet on the ground. Jeff Bradley made a few visits for us because he's in the States right now. Um, so he was our on-site guy. And so we did, a, we did a lot of work in Philadelphia and then up in Connecticut. You know, we chatted a little bit about Red Bull, but – what was really important to us was actually having our own home as well. And yeah. so when Hartford um, really opened their arms for us, it's totally exclusive to us. We're the only team that's there. UConn football won't be playing. Um, and from everything I see in the videos and so on, it's a beautiful stadium. Um, Josie and Michael speak highly of it. So when Greg does, Greg uh, knows the stadium. And uh, it's going to be our home away from home. So not ideal. But I think it's going to be a really good solution for for the situation. Is there still a hope, Bill, that maybe get back into BMO Field before MLS Cup? Is there still maybe a slight uh, you know glimmer of chance that there will be games at BMO Field and you guys can maybe play the playoffs potentially at BMO Field? Yeah, I mean certainly against Montreal, right? If uh, if we wound up playing Montreal, we would have that opportunity again. Um, we are holding hope, Stevie. It's as is Montreal and, and uh, Vancouver, it's it, so much is going to depend on the travel restrictions. You know, they just they just extended it again to the U.S. And we're respectful of that. Um, we thought we had a very good plan, um, whereas any club coming from the United States wouldn't even have been here for more than 24 hours. It would have been in and out day of game. Um, but just the sensitivities of coming through the airport and so on. Um, it, it, it's just not something that was going to fly right now. So we move on, right? And uh, we're gonna we're gonna keep hope, and hopefully things things you know in November um, calm down. And um, I do think the government the government was was very very good. Um, PHAC Public Health of Canada, and uh, um, they understood our situation. They just with with everything going on, um, you know. The door isn't closed, but for now, the door is closed. So we'll see. Bill, can you take us into some of the meetings with the players in preparation for this? I know that we talked about it off the top of the show, actually, about the importance of their mental health and making sure that every question is asked and then every question is answered, ultimately, as much as you can with those players. What were those conversations like and, and what was that situation like in terms of giving them that chance to come back and in between and, 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 and that mini quarantine, so to speak, and, and talk us through some of the issues that the players had before you decided to sign off on this. Yeah. So, so their biggest fear was we were going to be away for three and a half months or so. And so we had, we had let them know that we were working on a plan where we'd be able to fly in and out, but there was a possibility that we'd have to set up shop in the U S and Ali did a very good job of, of keeping the players um, abreast. And, you know, I spoke to a few guys during, during, at that time, I spoke to Patty and, and Michael and, you know, there was a good steady stream of information between Ollie and Greg and, and the group. Um, but as it came down to crunch time and decisions were being made, 
Um, once we found out that the federal government was not going to approve the in and out, we had already done our contingency plans for Hartford, uh, but we quickly got a call with the team and, and I let them know what was going on. The league in anticipating if we had a negative decision had already kind of built these blocks in into the schedule. And so we were able to tell them that the plan would be, we'd be away. We showed them the exact blocks and it was nice. I got a couple of phone calls myself, just guys saying, you know, just having those couple of days to come home is massive for us. You know, we can go away for a week or so. We can go away for two weeks, but as long as we know we're coming back, that's huge. And so, you know, Greg has a family. It's important for him as well. Um, and so to take a couple of days off uh, with no training is not the worst thing. And, and it, you know, I think the guys will go back refreshed seeing their family. Um, but it was a, a good steady stream of information without overwhelming them. The one thing that I felt was important is I just I didn't want to overwhelm them with all the options. It was more guys were on it. We're looking at all the different contingencies. Here's here are the scenarios, but we just kind of left it to little individual conversations here and there until we had to address the whole group. And how long will they be back when they come back for Bill in, to in total? Because I know for a lot of people, there's there's actually the 14 day quarantine that most people have to take when they come back from the U.S. So talk us through that process and how and how you got that approved. Yeah. So there's um it, it, there. And this is all the, the lawyers and, and uh, the legality of it is as long as you are quarantining in your domicile, in your home, um, and you are you travel for work reasons, you can you can leave again before the the full tenure um, to go back for work reasons. Right. right. So so that's our situation. And so Greg will make the decision on, on how long we'll be home. I told him I'll support whatever decision he makes. And it may be two days, two nights, three days. It may be, you know, three days, four nights, uh, four night, three nights, four days, whatever he decides. I imagine it'll be a couple of days, probably two nights and three days where um, he'll probably regen in Hartford, come back um sleep a night maybe two nights and then get back um depending on our schedule and for mental health you know too it's just the guys you know experienced uh orlando and and while it was very professionally done it was a long time and and i think that wore on some guys and so we're doing everything we can to make sure that things are taken care of on the ground here where we're shipping dogs to players parents like there's all kinds of things we're doing and we're keeping Tanya Padron back here um, just to make sure that she can look out for all the families. Um, uh, you know, we have pet services. We're, getting, we're doing drop-offs. We're still going to continue our food. So the families, um, Elaine will, will be cooking for all the families. And we're trying to do everything we can so that our guys don't have to worry about anything. And, you know, Stevie, you know, the last thing you want is a phone call from your spouse when you're on the road, right? And so, you know, complain yeah. And so we're going to try to make sure that, that everyone is taken care of so our guys can just fo focus on playing. Bill, we were talking exactly about this earlier in the show and how much of a culture shock it was for Stevie having been a soccer player where things get done for you to have to go into the broadcast world where you have to remember your own pass passport when you go into the, the All-Star game, things like that. A passport. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think I know the answer to this anyway, but someone commented about the fact that presumably these games will be played in Hartford with no fans. Yeah, the, the first, um, for sure, the first couple of games, um, we just want to experience the building, understand the setup, get our guys comfortable. Um, and then we're, we're going to have a look at, um, you know, if uh, – if our players um, and, and our staff and everyone feels good about having some people to come in to watch us play, we're going to consider it. Um, but we're just going to we're going to get through the first couple of games first and then we're going to work with the, the state officials. Um, you know, they are allowing um, spectators. And so um, I told them that we'll 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 look at it and, and maybe it is an opportunity where some people will be able to watch us play. Um, but we did the first couple of games, at least, though, we're going to play with no fans. 
Bill, let me ask you about the performances of the team over the last few weeks. And I want to ask you specifically about Pablo Piatti because Pablo started every game since lockdown in Orlando and all the six games here. I think he's one of only four outfield players to do that. Um, what has your impression have been of him during this time? And I know that some fans are asking as well, like, what's the situation with him in terms of having that option on the contract? Does that kick in soon? I know I'm sure some of his representatives are already talking to you about that potentially for next year. What's the status of that? And what have you liked about Pablo's game? Look, I think Pablo has come in and he's now starting to make an impact. Um, you know, Jim Liston told me the last, uh, I think, three games, he's covered more ground than anyone on the field. And so that's, you know, something that's important to Greg is that work rate. Um, you know, Richie Luria makes that fantastic run um, in the Montreal game, but Pablo was aware enough to follow the run, uh, yeah. to be there to finish it off, which was, you know, it's a very savvy move, um, but also peace of mind. Uh, he's a good guy. He gets along well with the team. He wants to win. He's fiercely competitive. Um, I think, uh, you know, Greg at first um, was trying to figure out where to play him, how to fit him in. You know, we have a lot of talented players in the midfield. And I think he's, he's found a spot. You know, he scored that great goal against uh, Vancouver. And he's followed up now with a couple of assists. He had the assist uh, with Pozuelo in Vancouver. And he's, uh, he, I think, is finding his form. Um, that, that break really helped him because he was able, you know, coming off the ACL injury, it's actually the other muscles that weaken um, from atrophy. And so... He was able to really work on strengthening his hamstring. And, uh, you know, you saw that goal, how he celebrated with Marcello. Um, he is uh, he's fit and he's healthy. And, you know, when he's fit and healthy, you can see his soccer IQ is very high from having played in La Liga for so many years. He's a, he's a very good player and he's helping us win. And so I think he's still got another gear in him. I think he's, he's gotten accustomed to the team and, uh, um, I think we're still going to see better things from him. So when does that decision have to be taken, Bill, in terms of next year for, for Piatti? Uh, I mean, for the most part, we always wait until we're towards the end um, with options. Um, and so we'll, we'll, we'll look at it as we get a little further through the season. This, you know, this has been a crazy year. And so um, we'll be looking certainly at that, but you know, right now he's fitting really well. And uh um, you know, you need production out of your DPs. You know, if you're going to spend money, um, those are the guys that have to produce. And so, you know, we still want to see Pablo be consistently on the scoreboard and, and, and part of the attack. Um, but so far, he's, he's doing really well. Bill, really appreciate you taking the time to join us on Footy Talks. Lots to get through. We, we could have kept you for the whole afternoon, but we'll, we'll leave it there. And I'm sure you've got many more important things to do. So thank you for your time and, uh, and letting all the TFC fans watching today know exactly uh, what's gone into the, the decisions that have been made over the past few weeks. Great. Thanks, Luke. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate your time. But thanks to everyone for joining us on this uh, Footy Talks. We'll see much. you again next week and uh, Saturday night, 7.30, uh, TFC at DC United, live on TSN.